Hello, I'm Lisa Listen with Are You My Cousin? And oh, hi, I'm Lisa Listen with the Are You My Cousin website and YouTube channel. I am excited to be able to talk with you today about one of my favorite topics, which is that of culinary heritage. So let's start exploring together our culinary heritage. Now this video, content of this video, as well as the thoughts, views, and opinions expressed herein belong solely to the creator and do not necessarily reflect the views of Family Search International and Roots Tech. Okay, now that we've got that bit out of the way, let's start exploring. I want you to just imagine for a moment, sit back, let your eyes close, and I want you to think about the most important events or time periods in your life. Are you remembering things like baptisms? Maybe it was a confirmation, or maybe it was those family celebrations of a birthday or graduations. Perhaps one of those important events or this involve family gathering to mourn the loss of a loved one. I expect a lot of your memories involve food. Am I right? You know, we just came off the holiday season a couple months ago and how many of our celebrations included food? Now we may gather around the table as a family and we, or we may simply prepare the, and eat the foods that have appeared on our family table throughout the years. And when eaten with others in person or by a Zoom chat, or even on our own, food has a unique way of uniting family and friends. It's a big part of our culture and our heritage because food unites us and food bonds us. The foods we cook and eat tell the stories of who we are and where we've been. The foods we eat tell the stories of our ancestors too. Now, whether you've come across some old recipes or photos of heavy food laden tables at past family reunions during your genealogy research, or you'd simply like to take some dishes from your family heritage travels, let's find out what those ancestors ate. Now let's back up for just a second and answer this question. What is your culinary heritage? Culinary heritage, quite simply, are the foods and dishes that our ancestors ate. Do you see consistent foods that show up at a family reunion or in your family Christmas dinner every year? What foods do you see in those old family photographs? What your ancestors ate can indicate your family's ethnic heritage. My family reunions and covered dish suppers tend to be very heavy on the sweet tea and deviled eggs. So you may have guessed, my roots run very deep in the U Southern US states. However, dinner at a friend's house is a delicious meal and includes rice and beans that are indicative of her Puerto Rican heritage. And let me just say, they are some of the best rice and beans you will ever have. Does your family enjoy goulash? That slow simmered succulent pork dish with has a paprika enriched broth? Well, if so, then you may be looking at your Hungarian roots. Now what your ancestors ate, now what your ancestors ate reflects more than just their taste or just what they liked to eat. Their foods reflect what was available to them. It reflects the area's economy where they lived. So your ancestors who lived on a coast would have probably had more seafood in their diet. Ancestors who lived along major trade routes would have had more variety in their diet. More ingredients would have been available to them, such as a, a bigger variety of spices and just the overall type of food that they could eat. For ancestors living further away from city centers or trade centers, the meals would have cre been created from what they could grow or raise. The climate and soil would have been dictated what types of food they could have eaten. Less variety would have been available to them. Finding clues to what your family ate doesn't have to be that difficult. You can see it at the family reunion or at the Thanksgiving table. Always at the top of Thanksgiving dinner were the butter beans. Now, I can be honest with you and tell you I really didn't like these butter beans. I still don't really like butter beans, but that's okay. There's really nothing wrong with butter beans, but they played an important part in family meals in my family. And that is because my ancestors were rural farmers. They were not particularly wealthy. They ate what they could grow. In this case, butter beans were quite easy to grow where they lived. So they did, they grew them and they canned them and saved them for winter. 
So butter beans appeared on the table, showing me that I have this rural, this rural farming family background. Now, I may not have liked the butter beans, but I can guarantee you I loved my grandmother's cornbread. Now that cornbread, she learned to make from her mother, my great grandmother, who learned to make it from her mother, my great great grandmother. Now this is generations of women who make this very traditional recipe of cornbread, very traditional Southern food and Southern families. Now, and it's a type, it's the, the type of cornbread is what is indicative and shows me those deep hair, those deep Southern roots because other parts of the country make cornbread a little bit different and that's okay, but it shows me and, and confirms where those roots are. So I encourage you to consider and think about what is consistently showing up on the family table when your family gets together to celebrate an occasion. Is it sausages and bratwurst indicating your German heritage? Or maybe your family does things a little differently. Maybe they gather every afternoon for coffee and this wonderful cardamom spiced bread called pula. If so, then your Finnish roots are probably showing. The more time immigrant ancestors and subsequent generations spent in their new country, their food preferences may have changed. Or their traditional foods may have changed based on the ingredients that were available to them when they were creating those dishes. And that's okay, because the basics are still there and still recognizable as those traditional foods. Now let's consider what type of culinary heritage you can find and learn about from your old family photos. So, that's the first thing is to grab those old family photos that you have, okay? And specifically, I want you to grab those more candid photos, those almost accidental photos that were taken. These are not the posed photos, but these are the photos that can typically show people eating. They might have a picture of the food. For some reason, my family typically took a picture of the table before they ate. So grab those photographs. And that is exactly the type of photograph that you see in front of you. Now, this particular photograph was originally black and white. I actually used VividPix, a photo editor, to restore it and make it look a little better and clean it up. And then I colorized it using my Heritage's colorization program because I wanted to be able to get a better idea of what I was seeing. Now, this photograph, to be honest, you can find a lot of great information genealogically relevant information in. There's a lot of social history that can be pulled from this photograph, but for our purposes, we are looking specifically at that food table below because it is very, very indicative of those Southern US roots that I have. And I want to show you kind of what I pull from that so that you have an idea of what you can might find in your own family photographs. So first up, what I find over in the bottom left-hand corner is white bread. So in that bottom left-hand corner, what you're finding there is white bread. And for I don't know why, but for whatever reason, it typically showed up at the family um, family dinners. Still does <laughs> occasionally. I think it may have just been for the children. I don't know, but it did show up. Behind that, on the also in that bottom left, you see what looks to be like fried chicken. Now I can guarantee you there was gonna be fried chicken or chicken of some sort at that table. And yes, it is there. There's also another pile of something very similar next to it as well. Now in the very center, you see that, that jar. And this would, have been a, this would have been a canned vegetable of some sort. Most likely because it shows up in the jar on the table, it would have been a, pick, a pickled vegetable very common in this family. They made, one of the traditions that came down was making pickles. We liked pickles in our family and they would make pickles. So this is most likely a jar of pickles and it appears to be based on the, the shape of what's in that jar. I, but it could have been a different vegetable that had been pickled. But in all likelihood, I believe this is the pickles made from the cucumbers and they are absolutely delicious. Moving on down, you're gonna find a dessert into the table because we do like our desserts, let me just say. And there was always a lot of desserts, typically a cake, which is what this appears to be like a, a layer cake of some sort. Absolutely, you're gonna find that there. There is in that center also a large um, pot with a probable ladle in there sticking out. And for this would have been a couple of things. This could have been a Brundtrich stew because some families in the South would have had that. In this case, it was probably just a bucket of water 
perhaps for drinking because this particular home behind them did not have running water. So they would have needed something. And very tiny in the over on the right hand side, you might be able to see is a salt shaker. Yes, you would have found a salt shaker on this table because they did like to salt those vegetables. Very typical of a Southern family get together. Not everyone will have those family meal photos or even the tradition of family meals. So where else can we find our culinary heritage? Well, one place is absolutely our traditional genealogy research. As you research your immigrant ancestors, you will be finding clues and evidence of where they immigrated from. Find the birthplace of your immigrant ancestor and or their parents in the census records. Does that census record indicate that your ancestor was naturalized or had filed papers for naturalization? Well, if so, you want to grab those naturalization papers as well. Ship passenger lists can also indicate where a passenger came from. In other words, what country they were a citizen of before they immigrated to the United States. Now, census records, naturalization records, ship passenger records, they all will oftentimes just give you the name of the country. But there are instances where they might give a city or a village or a region. So you always want to check each of those records to see if you can pick up another important clue to what part of a country or what area of a country your ancestor immigrated from. Because your culinary heritage may differ depending on what area of a country your ancestors came from. Now, on rare occasions, I will actually even find evidence of where an ancestor was born in the deed records. Now, this isn't the first place I go, absolutely, but you might find th statements such as John White, formerly of Scotland. And if that's the only record you have, then you would know that you have some Scottish heritage there. Now, here's a genealogy tip that I want to offer to you. And that is to never assume that any record you are researching does not have information on your ancestors until you look. In other words, that deed record example is a perfect example. It is not where you would normally go to find out where your ancestor immigrated from or migrated from within the country, but it absolutely could have that information. So don't overlook it. Make sure you include those all the, all the rec possible records in your research plan. Next, consider where your ancestors lived. If you want to learn more about the types of food your ancestors ate, look at the community. Seek out the community or county histories and who settled in the area. Was the community's culture heavily influenced by the settlers' home country? You can discover that by learning more about the local history. Learn more. You can find those books by using Google Books, which is online and many of them are free, or by contacting the local library there. If you can't visit the library, I would encourage you to um, speak with one of the librarians. They may have some books on that you could obtain that you could get hold of through interlibrary loan to to continue your research. And additionally, the librarian because they know the area, may be able to make some suggestions that you might not have thought of before. Seek out local community and church cookbooks. Created by the, the local women of the area, community cookbooks or church cookbooks were often created as fundraisers. And they absolutely will shed light on what were the common and most popular foods in the area for that time. Because the women who were, who were submitting recipes to that cookbook we're typically putting in their favorite recipes. Maybe it was the one their family was known for. Maybe it was one she particularly loved and was really good at. So they were not putting in typically ones they didn't care for. They were putting in their best. And that's gonna be indicative to you of what type of culinary heritage that community has. And as a bonus, those vintage cookbooks are wonderful places to start looking for your female ancestor if you're struggling with that part of your research. Also, consider looking and reading the newspaper, those local newspapers. Sometimes the smaller the better in this case because they might print recipes. Sometimes they do write-ups of family reunions or church gatherings and it details the food because food was important to the community. 
Lastly, perform a good old fashioned Google search. Do you know that your ancestors came from Germany? Well then perhaps Google traditional German recipes or Google traditional German foods to learn what types of foods they may have eaten. Maybe your family, you discovered your family immigrated from Lithuania. If so, a Google search very quickly tells you that that family probably ate a lot of potato-based dishes, cheese curds, or beetroot soup. Take a virtual tour or cooking class with local guides to learn about a particular region and their foods. Tours by Locals and Road Scholars are two companies that offer virtual tours and cooking these cooking classes. You, you have an opportunity to learn about traditional dishes, make those dishes, and talk with the locals who are helping you, who are instructing you. They're oftentimes instructing you right from their own kitchens. It's a fabulous way to be able to ask questions and learn from someone, from locals in the area and get your questions answered. Okay, so this is all well and good, but why should we learn about our culinary, culinary heritage? Why should we even really care about that culinary heritage? Because, because, after all, we're genealogy researchers. We like to research in the records. We like to explore old cemeteries, right? How is knowing what our ancestors ate? How is understanding those foods? How, how is that gonna help us with our research? How is that gonna get us further back in our family tree? Well, you know what, you're right. Our culinary heritage is not going to tell us who our fourth great grandmother is. You're absolutely right. But knowing our culinary heritage will connect us through our generations. It tells us who we are. It tells us the story of those ancestors. Cultural foods help children and non-genealogy family members actually connect to those previous generations. Those foods at celebrations and family dinners they start the conversations. Marian Weinstein, author of The Surprising Power of Family Meals, states that the family meal encloses us and strengthens the bonds that connect us with other family members. Seek out your culinary heritage, discover its flavors, and savor its connections. Because after all, food unites us and food bonds us. Thank you so much for watching my presentation and for more great content, check out the Roots Tech Connect page.